just loving the word, but you have to be a lover and a doer. If you are not a lover and a doer of the word, you might not see the fullness of the power of God. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Amen? Amen. If you find it, you can just please help us read it. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Yeah. For the word of God is quick Amen. and powerful yes, and sharper than any two edged sword. Amen. Piercing yeah. even to the to the dividing asunder of the soul and uh -huh. spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a dissenter of the thoughts Amen. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the art Amen. Amen. Amen I'm going to read it from Amplifier Bible yes. it says for the word that God speaks is a life Amen. Amen the word that God speaks is a life yes. Amen. Amen it's not dead every other person's word might be dead but the Bible says the word that God speaks it's a life. A full of power. Yeah. Amen. Full of power. Yeah. Are we looking for power? The yeah. word of God is a life and full of power. Making it active. That's what Amplified says. Yeah. For the word that God speaks is a life and full of power. Making it active. Operative. Energizing. And effective. Yes. So the word of God can energize any situation. Amen. It can operate in any situation. It's active in any situation. Yes. And then it is effective. It says it is sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, two-edged sword means it can cut this way and it can cut this way. Amen. Most men cut only one way. But then the Bible, the word of God is able to cut this way and cut this way. Amen. Amen. It says and penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life yeah. <laughs> that's the soul and the immortal spirit yeah. and of joints and marrow yeah. of the deepest deepest part of our nature exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart yeah. that is what the word of god can do yeah. and then i read it from another translation it says for the word of God is alive and active, uh -huh. sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts all the way through for where soul and spirit meet. And I started wondering and thinking, where does the soul and the spirit meet? Wow. The Bible says the word of God is able to cut into that place. I mean, you know, I can't imagine where the soul, I can't imagine the dividing line. But it says the word of God is able to cut through to where the soul and the spirit meet. Yeah. To where the joints and the marrow yes. come together. You know, okay, those that are scientists that do biology know what the joints and the marrows are all about. And then the Bible says the word of God is able to go even to that deepest bone and marrow. Yes. So Good. it means there's no sickness on this earth. Yes. That the word of God, that the power and the word of God cannot cut through. Amen? Amen. There's no situation on this earth that the word of God cannot cut through. Amen. No wonder the Bible says the word of God is quick and it's powerful. It's good, Dr. Good. It is quick and it is powerful. Yes. Amen? Amen? But then there's another problem. The word of God is quick and powerful. But the one that you're able to use to be quick and powerful is in your own situation is the one that you have the entrance of that word. Amen? Amen. The Bible says the entrance of the word giveth light yes. and understanding unto the simple. Yes. Meaning no matter how hard that situation is, there's a word of God consigning every situation. Yes. How many of us can boldly declare, I have ten words from the Lord that has to do with my situation. Amen? Amen? I'm sure not many of us can count scriptures. Like I normally say, 
when the doctors give us prescriptions, yes. we are so fit in swallowing those prescriptions. Oh, yes. But how many prescriptions have you swallowed from the word of God concerning the situation that is in your presence? Amen? Have you got sat down before God? Sat down with the word. Holy Spirit, help me. I just need five scriptures that has to deal with this situation I face. I don't need more than five, oh God. Just direct me to five scriptures. And when you sit with those five scriptures, in the morning, you swallow the five. Amen? In the afternoon, you swallow the five. Amen? In the night, you swallow the five scriptures. No devil. Amen? Amen. There's no devil on earth that we can withstand the word of God. Amen. You cannot swallow this word faithfully for one week Amen. and not see changes in your situation. Right. For the word of God is quick. Amen. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to cut across any situation Amen. as long as you hold fast to the word of God. Amen. But the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, Amen. nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he spoken? And will he not do what he has said? As long as he has said it, he's a faithful God and he will do it. Amen? Amen. Another thing again that we need to do. Sorry. Yeah. Amen. The first thing we need to do and to know for the power of God to be released is to have the word of God dwelling richly in our hearts. Yeah. Let it not just be in your lips. Amen. Let it come from your heart. Yeah. Be word addictive. Let them know that when you press me this way, the thing that will come out from my word, mouth should be the word of God. Yeah. I should be able to get to the point where anything that faces me should have an answer based on the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's make up our minds. I will fall in love with the word of God in a new way. Right. I will study the word like I've never done before. Wow. Yeah. Because I know in the word of God lies every answer to the challenge of life. Yeah. Nobody loves the Lord and loves the word of God that remains the same. Yeah. I never stop saying, can I Copeland, the richest, one of the richest preachers on earth, only discovered one scripture. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And today, we know that scripture is working very well for him. One scripture. You don't need too many. Just look for one. As for me, one thing I know for sure, there's nothing the devil can do about this scripture. All things. All things. All things. Work together for my good. Because I love the Lord and I'm called according to his purpose. There's no situation you bring across my way that I am not persuaded that there's a good in it. No matter how bad the enemy intends for that situation to be, at the end of the day, a good comes out of faith. So what scripture are you holding on to? Yeah. What scripture can they pinch you at every moment in time? Amen. I know that this scripture, I know beyond reasonable yeah. doubt that it's working for me. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We should all get to the point. And if you can have one scripture, you can also have a hundred. Yeah. You can imagine what will happen to your life if you have a hundred scripture. Mama, that you Mama. know that you know that you know wow. that this one is working for me. And I am persuaded if you are able to turn and hold some scriptures, you will see the difference it will make in our lives. Amen? Amen? Another way we can make power to be released in our life is found in Psalm 63, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 63. Sorry, Psalm 66, verse 1 to 3. Amen. It says, Make a joyful noise unto God, yeah. all ye lands. Yeah. All ye lands. You want to see power? Make a joyful noise. Yeah. 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 You are going to a situation that you can't comprehend. Yeah. Lock yourself up and make a joyful noise yeah. unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord in that situation. Yeah. Dance before Him in that situation. Yeah. I am persuaded. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. You can't make a joyful noise unto the Lord and you will not see the power of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Verse 2 says, Sing for the honor of his name. 
and make his praise glorious. Second Chronicles 20, 20, 21, we see how Jehoshaphat praised the Lord and his situation turned around and the power of God was made manifest that the enemy started killing themselves. So learn how to praise the Lord. If you want to see the power of God in every situation, learn how to sing unto the Lord. Learn how to make a joyful noise. Learn how to shout unto the Lord. And then verse 3 says, Say unto God. Say unto God. Say unto God. Say unto God. Amen. Say unto God. Do not say unto any man. Do not say unto that situation. It says, say unto God. How terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. So what are you saying unto the situations that you see? Learn how to say unto God. When you wake up in the morning, I do this a lot and I say, Oh Lord, I say unto you, how terrible art thou, O God, in thy works. I am persuaded that through the greatness of your power, all my enemies shall submit unto me. So Lord, I thank you for the greatness of your power that is making all my enemies and your enemies submit unto you and submit unto me. How terrible art thou, O God, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. There's no enemy that does not submit to the greatness of God's power. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because he's the all-powerful God. And there's no situation that is bigger than him. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Amen? Amen. Another way you can get the power released into your life is simple. It's found in Matthew 7, 7. Ask. Just ask. Lord, I ask for your power. The Bible says ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and you shall open. Ask and you shall find. Ask and you shall receive. Sorry. Seek and you shall find. Have you realized how the wicked seek for this power? This witch doctors don't play. The romancers don't play. There's one man in Africa. He doesn't go to the toilet for about one month. He won't ease himself. He keeps it all because he's looking for power. And after one month, when he urinates, people come and pay so much money, all because of power. Wow. That's how wicked, that's how terrible people go to seek for power. We don't have to do all that, amen? amen. We can wait on the Lord, seeking for his power, amen? amen? And he will give it to you. That's why Christ came and died for us, amen. to release his power, because it says, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until I endure you with power. So when we seek for this power, he gives it to us. We don't have to go an extra mile the way they go. Amen? Amen? And you know the annoying thing and the funny thing is that these witch doctors that people go to ask for power, where they live is so dirty. I mean, they live in... I can't imagine how people believe that somebody that does not have help can help them. None of them live in any good place. Yeah. They live in very shabby places. And then people go, line up very... Beautiful cars sit on the floor, give them so much money, and here we are, yeah. freely, freely, freely uh, is yeah. willing to give, give us the power. Yeah, so why do we stress ourselves doing what is not worth it? Wow. Instead of just simply saying, Lord, I ask for power. Uh, Amen? Yeah. And when you ask, you don't receive immediately. Take an extra mile, seek. Yeah. Wait on him. Ah, yeah, yeah, and if yeah. you still wait and it looks as if you are not seeing the power that you want, no. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on pressing on. Ah, bah, bah. Keep on pressing on. Amen? Yeah. Until you see the power manifest itself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Then finally, one way for you to have this power released into your life is to desire power. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And to know 
that you already have it because you have asked. Amen? I mean, for Sister Kizzy to go to them and say, call your manager, is because she knew Amen. that she had the power. Amen? Amen. I remember the, what, the one time I was looking for a job. I think more than 100 of us just had one position for that job. Only one position was left, was open. But we were so many that gathered there. And I went and I went to the workers there and I said, please, where is the office that is vacant? Nobody knew what I was doing. And they said to me, oh, this is the office that is vacant. And I went, sat in it, and I said to myself, nobody is going to take this seat except me. No matter who comes for the interview, even if they are better than I am, this seat is my own seat. Amen? Okay, then the man left about, everybody else left, only 20 of us were left. They called 20 of us. I still went back to the seat. And I said to the seat, oh, seat, you belong to me. Nobody is sitting on you except me. Amen? Amen. So the man started asking us questions. One of the other said, so okay, if you get this job, and it was the executive manager's job, if you get this job, what are you going to do? How are you going to run around seeing you don't have a car yet? I said to the man, but there's the official car, which belongs to the GM, amen? Which belongs to the general manager. I said, I'll use the official car to go around. He laughed, but it challenged him, amen? Because he felt, okay, this person knew what she wanted, amen? And before I went to that job, while I was still in school and I was looking for a job, I would just walk to an office and I would say, please, can I see the overall boss in this office? And they'll be wondering, because at least I was as tiny as Josh Bell, so you can imagine how tiny I was, amen? And I'll just walk to the office and say, please, can I see the general, the executive director of this office? Do you have an appointment? Uh, well, not really, but now I'm going to have an appointment. Okay, amen? When I walk and say, what can we do for you? I say, I think I have a job in this place. I mean, I have a place here, amen? amen. And all the places I had gone, by God's grace, I got the job. Amen. Knowing yeah. that there was power Praise in the inside God. of me, amen? amen? So for us to see this power released in our lives, let's go deeper amen. into the word of God. Amen. Look for that scripture that deals with the situation you are going through. Don't take any situation for granted. Anything happening to you, I will take it lightly. The devil is wicked. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? So we need power in this last day to confront every wickedness of the wicked. Yeah. And one way you can do that is by locating the word that deals with every situation you are going through. Ask and the Lord will give to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To see this power and the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. And then Learn how to say unto God, How terrible art thou, O God. Amen. Through the greatness of thy power, O God, cause all my enemies to submit unto me. Lord, through the greatness of your power, cause every situation that is not bringing glory to your name in my life to submit to me. Amen. Through the greatness of your power, O God, cause this my children troubling me submit to your will, O God. Learn how to speak the word into every situation. And I am persuaded, because God is not a man, your situation will turn around. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I like this, my song again is that I can see everything turning around for my good. As far as I'm concerned, every situation will turn around for our good in Jesus' name. Because the power has been released. Let's walk in this power that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Let's just stand on our feet. Give him more praise. Amen.